This is it. We are live on Facebook. So welcome to everybody to Pinhole Quilting, um, to our showroom in Pershaw, Worcestershire. Um, and it's a very warm welcome to everybody. Anyone who's a domestic quilter or a long arm quilter, um, we hope that you enjoy some of the tips and techniques we're gonna give you today. Um, we are joined quite often by people from all around the world. So welcome to anybody who's coming to us. Again, we uh, welcome people from Esperance and Brazil um, and the Adirondacks and wherever else you may be in the world. We hope that everybody's well and uh, we look forward to connecting with you on Facebook. Pete will be answering any questions you might have, um, if possible, he'll do that during the show and he might throw out some questions that you've got. Um, and if you have got any um, interesting questions or observations about your own personal experience of long arm quilting, we would love to hear them too. Is it working? Yes, it's it working. We've got people saying hello already. Oh, so we've good. Got Pearl. Yep. Good morning, Pearl. Oh, good morning, Pearl. Pearl is one of our nearest customers. So, hi, Pearl. Uh, good to Jean see you. Jean Cousins. Hello, Jean. Oh, Jean. Hopefully, you sorted your tension issue now. <laughs> yeah, we'll be talking about tension in a bit. Lindy, good morning. Oh, good morning, Lindy. Joyce from Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, yes. Hello, usually Joyce. joins us on a Saturday. Yes, hi. Oh, Gemma, our, our very newest customer. Absolutely. Morning, and I just saw you sent us an email. So, we'll look at that afterwards. Jane Morley from Jane South from, Sea. Yep. Sylvia, Sylvia in South Yorkshire. Hi, Sylvia. Oh yeah, Sylvia. Lynn Cook. Hope you're getting on well with your price stitcher. Oh, there's lots you're of people. Lynn Cook, Sally Mottram, Gwen McLean, Elizabeth oh, Allen, Sally and Laurel. Elizabeth and Brian up Laurel, in Scotland. Laurel Byrne, Carol Beely. Oh, now Laurel's very excited because she and her mate, um, Diane. I, Diane, <laughs> that was good. I was, I was gonna say, and her friend Stitchscape, because I just think of Diane as being Stitchscape. Um, have recently had a moxie, which is very, very exciting. And we it's almost palpable, the whole sort of excitement of um, Diane playing around on her moxie. So okay. lots and lots of people. So Great. somebody from the Netherlands well, welcome. joining us. And, uh, yeah. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. So it's got, I hope that we, um, we can cover some of the topics that might be of interest to uh, lots of different people. I've actually got three machines set up here today. Um, so it's going to be lots to go um, to do. Um, apologies, we're a bit late. This, uh, there's just, can you imagine setting up your own long arm? Now multiply it by three. Um, and there's always so many other things that we've got going on here. So uh, apologies that we were a little bit late. Now, um, I want to talk to you about tension, but I can tell you a little story first. Um, this is my tension story. Um, and, uh, you know, tension is one of those things that we try to avoid. We don't want any headaches as a result of using your long arm. Um, and my tension story, um, I've got a sample that I'm just going to grab, which I've put over on the chair over here. And I'll just put it there. Now, um, many years ago, um, my dad and Alan, our engineer, and myself, we went over to see Handy Quilter at uh, Salt Lake City in Utah. Um, and it was fantastic. I mean, this is like, I suppose it must have been, I'm going to say 2010 or 2011. Um, so very early days for us of having the Handy Quilter uh, distribution. And so we went over for some training. So we were doing some training that involved us using the machines as well. Of course, you've got to be able to use the machine. So Alan, our engineer, was there as well as me and my dad. And we're in the big handy quilter classroom where you can go and learn all about the handy quilter machines. But there's just the four of us actually were in total. There was um, Narelle from Australia. She's the uh, distributor's um, sort of education person for um, Blessington in Australia who distribute the handy quilter. Um, so anyway, the four of us are learning all about handy quilter and we were basically doing like a compressed foundation workshop that we do here. So we were trying lots and lots of different threads and I was using an Avanti and um, we had at the time the educator who was head of education, Vicky Hoth, who many of you will have seen on lots of the videos. Now, Vicky is a, is, um, she's an extremely experienced quilter. Um, she's a force to be reckoned with and um, she's extremely knowledgeable. So we were learning from Vicky and uh, she's retired now, uh, but uh, she was, you know, head of education at the time. Anyway, I'm putting my different threads through and flossing up which basically means that in the tension discs, we have to ensure, because tension is a little different on a long arm from a domestic. With a domestic, you've actually got the press and foot mechanism. When it goes down, the tension discs do this, and they grab the thread. On a long arm, it's not the same. Your tension is permanently engaged. Key difference. 
And for those of you who have not done long arming, you probably, probably didn't know that. Uh, but that does mean that the tension discs are quite tight together and we have to kind of get that thread so it's really inside the tension discs to ensure that we don't have a problem with our tension. If it is not in the tension discs, what happens is you get bird's nests on the underside. Key thing, underneath the quilt, top tension. Tension discs is usually the issue. And uh, some of you, when you get your machines and it's fairly new for you, you might not know where to start, but that's a key one. Um, it can be other things, but that's the one we should always check first. Anyway, I had a problem with the tension. On the top, it looked absolutely beautiful. This is my sample from 2010, 2011. This is the one I brought back. And it looked absolutely beautiful from the top. Really happy days, not a problem at all. And I looked at the underside and it was a complete bird's nest. And on the top, not a problem. So I called Vicky over, Vicky, I've got a bit of a problem. And this is the first one, the first time I've ever used this machine. And she said, okay, Liz, I'm not gonna mimic an American accent. I just did, but I won't do it anymore. And uh, so she said, okay, Liz, um, you need to adjust your top tension. You don't have it flossed up in the tension disc. So I said, okay, right, right. So I did that and um, I cured the problem. So that then was before and after. Great, happy days. Next thread. So we changed the thread and we put in a uh, 12, uh, 28 weight, 28 weight thread. And I put it in and I thought it was all great. And then suddenly started off okay. Can this be seen, Pete? Am I in a good, can you see? Can you see that on the underside? A little bit closer still. A bit closer. Up a bit. Okay. There yes, we go. So I actually started off all right, but it jumped out of the pen of tension discs. That's the underside. Top side, not a problem. Happy days. I flip it over as I'm sort of looking at this. I'm thinking, oh no, I've got to get it to come over again. So I had to get Vicky to come over again. I said, Vicky, Vicky, got a bit of a problem. So Vicky looked at me and she looked at the tension on the underside and she said, okay, everybody, come over here and see what Liz has done. I did mimic the American accent. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I could not help it. You can't tell this story without doing it. It's just impossible, right? Now, I think probably most of you will have picked up the uh, humiliation of that moment for me. Um, maybe in the, the uh, emotion with which I tell it. I can laugh now, but I was mortified at the time. Um, I've never forgotten it. So key, key learning point here is it might start off okay, but it can jump out. So we really have to make sure that it's flossed up. So we're gonna cover the tension. That's my story today. Um, I hope you enjoyed that one. And I would never do that to anybody in class. Come on, on over here, everybody, and see what Natalie or Jane has done. No, we don't, we don't do that. Okay, um, right, the other things that we're gonna to cover today, which um, are, there's, got, there's quite a lot actually. Um, we've got the moxies going out. Um, large numbers of moxies are being shipped out the door, which is wonderful. And those of you who are on Instagram will have seen some of our little stories with Pete wheeling the, um, the uh, pallets out ready for shipping. When you set your moxie up, you have a choice of frame setting in either what they call the high, or the low position, high or low. It doesn't really say very much about um, how it's set up. So let me just get the paperwork on this because you're gonna get in your box, and we've got lots of new people, you're gonna get information that tells you how to set it up. And the high and low positions make a difference. And here it is. In the paperwork in your Moxie, you're gonna get a sheet like this. And you can follow how to build the loft frame on the built app. Key thing is the built app shows you how to do the high position and we recommend the low position. Now there is a reason why we do that. I'm just gonna explain the reasoning for it. And if Pete, you can just sort of show this bit of the quilt frame a little bit closer, perfect. 
Now, when we we got our lovely stickers in our Moxie box, so I've labelled up on this particular frame, which is set up as low. I'm going to just rotate this, and I'll show you. There's a little sticker. Oh, oh, has it come off? Stickers come off. Ha ah, ah. ha. No good, no good. There used to be a sticker on here and it said top. <laughs> we, we took this um, out of the building last week, so somewhere this is this a sticker that says top with an arrow. This one says backing, there we go. Backing is on this rail in the low position and this would say top. Ah, oh, gutted. Um, so this tells you, if you forget, so I'll have to get another sticker, um, which way around to load it. And the reason that we've suggested, uh, recommend that you have it in the low position is for this reason. When we're doing rulers, and we've perhaps got quite long rulers, if we were in this area here, let me just pull this thread up. I'll just move the machine around, I just want to show you. And the ruler bases, um, those of you who had a ruler base on order, they should have been, uh, I think they got shipped out this week, didn't they, Pete? Almost all of them. Almost all of them. So now if we were using our ruler base on our Moxie and we wanted to use a right angled ruler like this, it's quite a long ruler. And it's so nice to have this absolutely flat area to work on. If we had the high position, what would happen is that this rail here would be above and it would have the top fabric on it and it would be sticking up here and I couldn't lay my ruler here. It would hit. So I would be restricted to using and manipulating my ruler between here and here. In the low position, happy days, I can put it wherever I want. That is the key difference. We also think that for shorties, I'm gonna call myself a shorty here, I'm allowed to do that. Shorties like me, it means that um, depending on how high you have the frame, this is a little bit low for me to be frank, but I, I like to sit on the saddle stool. For shorties like me, I, don't, I find that I'm not having to go over the top of the rail in order to, to do the quilting. It doesn't make any difference to the actual quilting area. However, the way that I actually approach the quilt is different. And this is the loft frame. For those of you with the studio frame, the original studio frame, you only had the choice of having this top rail loaded with your top fabric. For those of you with the studio two, you could have it in two different modes. That original one, they called standard. Okay, now we're gonna confuse you. I'm gonna write on the right whiteboard at this point because I think, I just want you to have this clarity, hopefully, clarity. So on the loft frame, you can have it in low or high. This one is best for rulers and short people. Okay. On the studio frame, you only had a choice of standard. There's no other option. On the Studio 2, i.e. the last four years, put standard against. I'm going to put standard here. And you could have Clearview as well. Clearview is equivalent to high. To low. What? Oh God, have I got the wrong way around? Yes. Okay, can we delete that bit? <laughs> you wrote it in advance, look over here, and you got it right. <laughs> oh, that is question. right. You got that, it the wrong way around. I, oh, darn it. Darn it, darn it, darn it. Oh, mortification. It's because I put that there. I put standard at the top. That was the problem. And it all followed on. Okay, rewind. Okay, people. Now, if you have a loft frame, the low is very good for rulers and short people. If you... <laughs> The joys of life, yes, Helen. <laughs> yes, don't, never work with children or animals. <laughs> or me. <laughs> you don't have an option of the low position, but you have standard with the old studio frame. Okay, studio two frame, we have the option of clear view, which is clear and clarity is not what I am providing at the moment. Clear view equals low. Standard 
equals pi. Don't already got that now. Good. Excellent. And Maureen has commented, Maureen, who was a trainer in her life. <laughs> I'm not sure it's too impressed. <laughs> Look. Here we go. So the I got it right over here, you're right. I so the right current now. frames that we supply are either the studio two frame or the gallery two frame or the loft frame. They all have the option for the clear view equals low position. And that's what we recommend and that's what we set up if we're doing the setup. We think it's superior um, to the original standard version for the reasons Liz has mentioned. <sighs> okay. Good. Excellent. You're allowed one mistake each morning. <laughs> Only one. That's a shame. I feel like I might be on a roll. Okay. Um, let's just, can I just cover the tension discs then, Pete? If we could, actually, can I, can I just rotate this out? Because I, I have a, a feeling I want to... Can I use a machine? That might be easier. No. Okay. I don't want to use different. Oh, better to move the furniture. Yeah, because 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 I want to move it up here. Right. If you are using a machine on a frame, it is normally easier to get access to it from the end of the frame. This is the end of the frame that we use the cogs and stoppers, and it means that particularly with things like the Moxie, which is not too big a machine, I can get access to the thread and all, I can see all of the tension and all of the loading of the thread. Now, I'm just going to unthread this. So a couple of questions in from Joyce who says, if you have an old studio frame, can you buy an adjustment to give you clear view? Yes, you can. Good question. Can I just, can I just clarify that? Yes. Yes, you can, <laughs> depending on the type of original frame that you have. Correct. If you have, can you upgrade, the question was, can you upgrade um, from an old style, from an old studio frame to Studio 2? And therefore, you can have it set up in what's called the clear view, so you can use the rulers more easily. Only if you have straight legs. So at the side of the frame, if the legs supporting the tabletop are straight. Like this. Then yes, there is a conversion kit available. Are you going to draw the curved leg version now, Liz? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> this is a straight one. And we can change out the side arms. Okay, you keep the rails and all the other um, bits and pieces, the table itself is the same. What they did was they upgraded these arms. So this is an arm upgrade. Is it on our website, Pete? It is, yes. It's on our website. So the very oldest frames have curved legs at the side here, and yep. those can't be upgraded. But if you've got the straight-legged original frame, there is a Studio 2 conversion kit if you have a straight-legged studio frame, or there's a Gallery 2 conversion kit available if you have a, an original gallery frame. So yes, Joyce, uh, in most cases you can. It just okay. depends on your frame. A uh, question from Leslie. Yes, Leslie in Rendell. Essex. Leslie oh, Leslie Rendell. Rendell. Hello, Rendell. Anglesey. Yes, hello, Leslie. If you want to float a quilt top, is that easier in clear view or standard? Oh, um... In some ways it is easier in standard, actually, because it just sort of goes over, over the top. But this one I'm floating. Okay, um, I don't have the studio frame here. I don't have the studio frame here. What that's... you would do, what you would do is if I do it in profile, if, if you imagine this is my, my quilt top and I've got a rail here, which has got normally the quilt top on it, I would, sometimes I would remove that but what this does is it stops bounce this is in standard it sort of stops the bounce 
We're going to do a program on floating your I'm going quilt. to do a video on this, I think. Yeah, but Don't we're you going think? to do uh, one of the Saturday yes. night sessions on it as well in the next yeah. week or two, Leslie, anyway. So. so when we do that, Leslie, it's a great question. It really is an excellent question. And it came up, um, I think, originally, i tell you why it came up, was that Abigail originally had, um, when she was doing the foundation workshop, she'd got the original Avanti frame, um, a Avanti with a studio frame, and she had it only in standard. And someone asked us the question, you know, how would you float? And both of us kind of went, oh, yeah, you know what? That we need to cover that. We need to cover what this difference is. Yeah. I think that's a separate thing. So we Sue, will do that. Sue Dutton, who's one of our new Moxie customers. Yes, hello, say, Sue. Uh, do, you tend, do you tend to float your tops? Okay, um, can we cover that? We'll cover that in the same in the session, uh, pros and so cons, because it's a lot more. I don't want to, I yeah. think this is way enough, and particularly since I rest, really messed up yeah. at the beginning. I don't what, know. what I would say, Sue, is that what you need to float your tops are some clamps. Now, those clamps are currently not available for the loft frame, but they will be becoming available in a month or so. so. Yes. So uh, that would be the time to do it, to be honest, Pete. Yes. When we've got access to the Moxie clamps for floating and the Studio 2 and the Studio original method, that always needs to all be done as a separate session. Yeah. Lovely. Great. I like this. Now, let's go back. It's half, nearly half past, all right? I want to go and cover from the end of this frame if possible. Can you get in there? Oh yeah, okay, that's that's fine, except it, I, I don't know whether... Yes, can you see that? Excellent, that's a really good angle. Now, the thread comes up to the cone thread holder and then on the Moxie it comes direct to here. On other machines we've actually got an intermediate um, thread uh, guide, like this one. But on the moxie, it comes straight to here, from the back to the front, from the back to the front, from the back to the front. And depending on the type of thread, sometimes we skip one or two of those holes. Then it goes through the thread guide here, which helps guide it into the tension disc. So this tension disc, let's just look at the tension disc. We have got a knob here. It has a little black dot on the outside of the knob. And you might want to put a little bit of snow paint or a little bit of white paint on that. Obviously, I haven't done it on ours, but um, that is in black plastic. So it helps work out whether you've done a full rotation or half rotation of your tension discs. This tension disc goes to the right, righty-tighty, to increase the tension, or to the left to decrease the tension. Okay, and the black marks are because I always get marks all over my hands when I do drawing on the board. Um, this here, behind there, is the spring. This little black here is the spring. We do not want to compress that spring too much. Springs have a memory, and if you do it too much, it will actually stay in that sort of compressed state if you're not careful, you'll ruin the spring. But in order to do that, you'd actually have to have um, had the tension spring way too tight. This, these two things here, this one and this other one here that face inwards are the tension discs. And I can put my fingernails in here to help, if necessary, to make sure that the thread is flossed in between them. That is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the thread in between those two discs. This is the spring. The normal operation of the spring is to move like this back and forwards. It should not be either too loose or too tight. When we do our tests to make sure it's okay, when we are sending out machines, we always do a check to make sure all our machines are hunky-dory after they've flown over here. And one of the checks we do is to make sure that this assembly is firm and that the spring, this upright part of the spring should be facing about 12 o'clock or slightly towards the 11 o'clock, that upright. Can you see that, that bit in there? Now, that spring, if it doesn't go up and down like this when you're sewing, you're not gonna get good tension. The springs can break, we can replace them. Um, sometimes thread gets caught around and it weakens it and stuff, so. Now I'm gonna show you how, from this end of the machine, how I normally thread up the machine. I get the thread 
on my left and my right hand thumb. Underneath it, I pinch it between my forefinger and my thumb. And I put it underneath the tension discs and I pull it and it almost clicks. Do you hear that? I mean, you could hear that. There was a little click as I lifted it in and certainly when I lift it out. And I literally floss it. Not as much as that, I'm overemphasizing it. I do it one or two times and I can feel that it's actually right inside those tension discs and it's by the spindle that those tension discs are sitting on. I then take it around with my left index finger around that spring and under the stirrup and I take up the slack and let it feed through until I've got no slack left. There's no slack here and this has now got the tension spring under pressure. Now I check it and I pull on it and I see what the tension is like. I'm building up my memory for what tension should feel like. And if it's too loose or too tight, I can adjust it at this point based on my experience. So that is how I do the tension discs. And I found that after my humiliation of Vicky has basically prevented future humiliation to the most, for the most part. So that flossing just makes sure that the thread is completely between those discs. It's very easy for the thread to be just halfway in and it all looks good from the outside but you'll never get good tension. Perfect. Now, I then continue to do the um, threading up because I want to show you and just run through with you now, unless you've got any further, unless you've got any questions. Anybody got any questions? Like I say, the effect of it not being in and what can happen, let me tell you what can happen. What can happen is if it isn't completely in, it will feel, because I had one of our Moxie customers um, that I spoke to on Thursday and what she found was it felt rough it sort of felt like it was kind of grabbing then it wasn't and the underside of her her fabric sort of showed that so that's one thing also like my experience that I had I found that it started off okay but because it wasn't properly properly bedded into those tension discs it jumped out so that can happen and I know you know some of you will have had that experience and it's very frustrating you thought it was okay but if you use that method honestly it, it's it just you you probably most of the time will not have a problem like 95 98 percent of the time i don't have a problem with my my tension i really don't i would say it is the most common issue for yes. new customers and particularly those customers where we're sending machines out yeah. self-installation exactly yes so that i mean we've got some fantastic videos now um but in essence that sort of technique of taking up the slack and everything that is really important now our next um, thing I would like to cover is uh, tension uh, is speeds. So first of all, we're going to do some demos on both the Moxie and the Avanti, and then I'm going to do some demos on the sit down Capri because I also want to cover on the Capri the sweet spots and paddles. So we, yeah, we're going to crack on with that. So I wonder if it's possible, Pete, to show the different modes of sewing. Um, by focusing on the screen here of the Moxie. So that Moxie screen, what that's showing at the moment is precision mode and precision and how many stitches per minute. Per Sorry, inch. it's per inch. Can't do well today, aren't I? Stitches per inch. So this screen on the Moxie is showing home, P for precision, needle stops in the down position, 10 stitches per inch. And on the information you get with your Moxie, on this quick reference card, on the right, on the back of it, you'll see home screens where you'll be when sewing are precision, cruise and manual. And that shows what the settings are. Now that's great, but when do you use each of them? So underneath, read through, if you've got a new Moxie, read through precision, cruise and manual. And it'll tell you more about the stitching modes but I'm gonna give you some more information as well. When we do our foundation workshop, we do cover this and we do encourage you 
um, on the sessions to try these different modes of stitching. For the most part, you'll be working on a machine um, that you've, uh, you've purchased, but actually all of the machines have precision, cruise, and manual. So you don't really have to worry too much about it. So I've just pulled up the, the notes, and this is also on our blog post for this week. On um, our blog post, I've put just this table, which is a really handy thing. You could just save that um, or just go onto our blog and just see it there. First of all, I just want to explain that the, there are two different ways of setting the speed in cruise and manual, and it depends on the machine you've got. On the newer machines, it's defined as stitches per minute. And on the older machines, it's by the speed of the machine as a percentage of the speed of the machine. So this final column says speed or stitches per minute. If you, therefore, if you have got an Avanti or a Fusion, you will find its percentage of the speed of the machine. If you've got, um, I think the Simply is stitches per minute, isn't it? The Simply and the Amara, the Forte, and the infinity are stitches per minute. That defines um, the cruise speed. So refer to that chart, and I'm just going to run through some examples. Now, I'm just going to pull up the thread and get stitching. I'm in precision mode. When would we use precision mode? Precision is probably the most common mode for most people, and certainly when they're starting out and they're building up their confidence and they're getting used to their long arm, I would say precision, most quilting with most threads uh, are going to be between 9 and 12 stitches per inch. We've got glide, so 10 or 11 is typically what I would use. Bear in mind I've just been fiddling around with the tension, so I'm just going to just check that looks okay. It doesn't look too bad from the top, but I will do some tests. And I'm going to look at the underside live. Very risky. Okay, so can you see on the underside, I've got a few ladders. And what that means is the top thread is coming through to the bottom. And I loosened off my top tension. And that means it's now on a tug of war between the top and the bottom is coming through. I would therefore, righty tighty, increase the tension. I'd increase it by half to three quarters of a turn. I always, I kind of like going beyond, um, but I'm just doing this. Let's have another look. Okay, there's a little bit showing, so I didn't do enough. Do you see how it's actually quite a lot? I mean, you have to turn it by quite a lot to have an impact. So just do that and increase it a bit more. It's this one here. Yep, yeah, that's good. Perfect. Right, so I've adjusted my tension and I'm in precision. Now, if I press stop, you'll see that the black little house on my screen goes, uh, the, the house goes to black. When I press the start button on my handlebar, it goes to green. But nothing yet is happening. And as soon as I start moving it, it starts to sew. That's precision. Even when it's just partway through the fabric, it'll just pause until I'm ready to sew again. Precision is exactly that. It's precise. It only sews when you're moving it. And it does that by the carriage encoders, which are on the X and the Y axis. So one's on the carriage and one's on the track at the back. And that's what tells the machine to speed up or slow down, to keep it consistent stitches per inch. Now, to change it to cruise, and I'm going to refer now to the chart, the cruise I would use for something like ruler work. Ruler work, I like to have my needle stop in the down position, which is what I've already got. But what I don't like to do is fight against it. If I was trying to move this with a ruler on there at the moment, I'd find that my, you know, my um, needle is in the work. So when I press go, the first thing I'm doing is having to push against the needle. It's not too bad, but it isn't, it isn't ideal. 
So that's in precision, and I, I really want to try it in cruise for my ruler work. So I press the minus and plus keys and change the mode to cruise. In cruise mode, I select how many stitches per minute on the Moxie are going to be sewn when I'm stationary. I'm in go, but I'm not moving it. It'll still sew by 125 stitches per minute. So if I press go, uh, I'll just go back to the main screen. It's now 11 stitches per inch and 125 on my cruise. Watch what happens and the difference between precision. When I press play now, it's starting to sew. It'll just do a little bit until I actually move it, but that's cruise. Now if I move it and pause, every time I pause, it will sew at a rate of 125 stitches per minute. Which is approximately two per second. So if you pause for a second, you'll get two stitches. It's also useful if you've got something like electromagnetic channel locks because you can see if I want little sharp points at my corners, it's going to throw some extra stitches in. So anytime I'm doing something where I, I'm not really fussed about the stitches per inch, but I really want to make sure I've got sharp corners. What about if I'm doing a star, for example? So there's, this is the start of my star there. Pause. I'm pausing. I'm pausing and I'm pausing and I have sharp points. Every time I pause, it throws in an extra stitch. That is cruise. Cruise with 125 stitches per minute. If I'm doing pantographs, I would have a similar setting for the same reason. If I've got little sharp points on my uh, pattern, then I want to do the same thing. Now, then we've also got an opportunity to do micro quilting, depending, I wouldn't necessarily do it with this thread because it's quite thick. But if I'd got a finer thread, I would use uh, 12 to 18 stitches per inch, depending on the thread weight, and 250 stitches per minute up to the maximum of your machine or 15 to 30% if you've got the Avanti. Um, so start at 30%, increase the speed. So the kind of thing that we're talking about there is if we just go into our settings for cruise, okay, I'm going to increase. So it said mi min minimum of 250. Well, I'm going to go 400 so you can see what that looks like. Now it's on 11. I want to increase that 11 to say 15 and 400 stitches per minute. So this is quite different to what we had before. So look how different this is when I sew with it. Tiny stitches. Now, why would I use that? I might use it when I'm doing something like um, little pebbles, and I might use it when I want to do things like filler so here's an example. Um, if I go into the cruise setting and I increase that to say 500 and so what I did there was pretty much 15 stitches per inch, but now I'm going to sew much slower. And here's my filler. I've not changed any of the settings on my handlebars, but it's automatically going to 500 stitches per minute. So this is where I bash down, create my structured leaf. That is what I'm trying to do, just in case you didn't know. Okay, and I just keep doing that until I've filled in the area that I want to do. When I'm, when I'm finished doing my filler, which you can see there, I might outline, but I can't because Pete's, you know, I might outline my leaf, and I'm back to 15 stitches per inch. So do you see, we've actually got two stitching modes. This is a really cool way of doing things. I've got two stitching modes. I've got stitches per inch, because my cruise setting is uh, 15 stitches per inch, 
But when I pause and I just go a little bit slower, it's doing 500 stitches per minute. So the same sort of thing with bubbles or pebbles. So that enables me to get a much smoother feel than if I were to do it in precision. Precision, it would feel really stop, start and horrible. But in cruise, with those kind of settings, it means it flows. There's a suggestion that we do a separate session on micro quilting and oh, yeah. threads and things. I think that's a good idea. That's a great idea. Yep. Okay, manual mode, just very quickly, manual mode is, um, I'm pressing the wrong button, manual mode is Hang on, press that, go to manual mode. And here I set how many stitches per minute. It'll start off at 350, but I can use my handle bars. So you can increase or reduce the speed actually as you're stitching. So that's in manual mode, where I might just be happy to have whatever stitches, stitch length um, I happen to have. Obviously, familiarity of the design will help a lot. For those of you on the Avanti then, um, the, the menu looks a little different. So I just wanted to quickly show you that. We've got stitch regulated or manual mode. We can flip between those two things. In regulated mode, we can go into precision. 11 stitches per inch. We can use our handlebars to change that, increase or decrease. And if we go into cruise, we set the percentage speed. So the one that I was doing, the equivalent on the Moxie would be about between three and 5%. And if I press go now, there it is. It's just sewing. In fact, if I just press stop, I'm just gonna press 5% because I think it's actually closer to, there we go. I pause. Pause. Pause, etc. So that is giving me the same pointy stars, pointy uh, pantographs, etc. that I would have had on the Moxie. If I was doing um, ruler work, I would have a similar setting. And if I was doing micro quilting, I would increase that percentage of the crews um, on here to something like that. So the speed 30%. of this machine is a maximum of 2,300. Yeah, so this machine has a maximum speed of 2,200 stitches per minute. So if Liz sets that cruise setting at 10%, that's equivalent to 220 if you're using Cruise on the Moxie or on the Simply 16 yep. or the Amara, for example. Okay, now, the last thing I'd like to cover today, in the last sort of five minutes, is for sit-down quilters. I'm sorry you've had to wait for quite a long time. I know I'm a big fan of our um, Sweet 16 and our Capri. So I thought I'd just show you something that I was working on a few weeks ago. Uh, it's still under my needle. It's been a busy couple of weeks. But let's just talk through two opportunities. Opportunities? That's the wrong word. Two options you've got for doing um, free motion quilting with a couple of tools that came out, I'm going to say three years ago. Um, the paddles and the sweet spots. Uh, the paddles actually come with a couple of knobs, but I don't particularly um, like them. I don't use them. But you can put sort of knobs on on these that they come with. Um, the sweet spots, they work for domestic as well as long arm quilters. Whereas this one I would suggest, if you've not got a long arm uh, to your sit down machine, then these are gonna be a bit too big. But they are great on the uh, Capri and on the Sweet 16, and they enable you to sort of have a huge amount of control. This is the Capri and I've got a stitch regulated machine here. So if I wanted to do what I was doing here and I'm gonna increase the speed and the stitches per inch, similar to what we just did. So 
it keeps them it keeps the fabric really nice and smooth and that might be something that you is important to do and i literally just rest my hands on it on the underside of both the sweet spots and the paddles we've got this sort of i think it's a bit like a velour it's kind of holds onto the fabric the nice thing about them is this that every time I want to do something like touch the screen, I don't have to remove my gloves. I don't have to sort of take them on and off to do anything else. I literally just rest my hands on here and away I go. So we've got a special offer. We've got a special offer on both of these of 20% off this week. So I'm just going to do a bit of sewing so you can see how I would use them. The best thing about them, I would say, having tried um, probably every other tool there is on the entire market for free motion sit down quilting, I would say the best thing about them is the precision that you can get to where, going where you want to. And there's nothing like live TV to demonstrate that. go. So that's the paddles. So Keep yeah, everything the, nice and flat. Those paddles are sort of eight or nine, nine inches long, which is why they work fine if you've got a, a long arm machine. Eight, yep. Um, but about about eight and a half inches. A, a short arm sewing machine, that's yep. not going to work so well. Yeah, I mean, listen, this is the thing, right? That is, that's actually inch markers on the sides. And though that is eight inches. Well, the original machine that I used to use, my little Benina, was six and seven eighths inch free arm. So it wouldn't even fit under the free arm. Um, okay, so this is the sweet spots. I really love these. But for this kind of thing, actually the paddles are easier. These are very movable. And again, I'm just literally just putting my hands on there. I'm just really relaxed. It's, it's just not a difficult thing to do. To move. I know this is a small piece, but all I would do if I had a larger piece of fabric is I would just stack it up around me and I would work on this area here. This is an 18 inch throat space machine. It's the Capri. It's got stitch regulation, two magic eyes here and here that are dictating um, the speed so I can actually get a nice regulated stitch. This is a little different, but here we go, just tracking back. There we go, and over to the next one. I'll have this finished by the end of this session. So the other thing that we've got this week I'll be putting up on the website as soon as we finished is this. Um, if you place an order for over 50 pounds on our website on handyquilter.co.uk, you are going to receive this excellent extra fine mechanical chalk pencil from Bowen. While stocks last, 0.9 millimeter wide um, th uh, thread, uh, thread? Um, lead on that. It's, um, I say lead, it's actually ceramic white lead. It's made with sort of composite of chalk and ceramic and they are fabulous. They're really free flowing and they are perfect for using with some of the stencils that we've got, the Cindy Needham, um, and it's got a spare one in there as well. A spare set of, uh, of leads. What else was the piece? Oh yes. Well the other thing I'd say just about the sweet spots and the paddles, yes they'll be 20% off but I don't think that's on the website just yet. It's not yet. So the standard price is £44 for the sweet spots and £66 for the paddles so don't order them until you can see that it's 20% less than those numbers. Yeah otherwise it's a pain. Um, we'll be finished in a few moments and so from let's say from 12.30 you should see that reduced price. The other thing that's really really great news is that um, Pete and I have discussed um, the showroom and we're able to open up non-essential retail can open up from the 12th of April. We are already taking showroom visit bookings um, and we would love to see you here. We've got all the machines, we're all set up, ready to welcome you back to our showroom. So unless you've got any other questions, I'd just like to say it's been lovely to connect with everybody today. I hope it's been a really useful session. We've covered a large amount. We've got some more topics for next time. So we look forward to connecting with you on Facebook Live next Saturday, 11 a.m. And you take care, have a great week and happy quilting.